But joining me is a lady who is a member of a very rare and proud fraternity, but you wouldn't know it. She goes about her business in a very unassuming, quiet manner. In fact, I've known her for probably two or three years through a mutual friend of ours, Blake Mikuliff. I've caught up with this particular Olympian to have a chat about her career and how she became involved in harness racing. Well, Caroline May Hildreth, or as you're known now, Caroline May Woods, an Olympian, you've been in our mist now for two or three years, as I mentioned in the introduction. I've known you for that period. Fair enough, she's a young lady. <laughs> yeah, no, I think um, I get in trouble from Brendan for not telling people enough <laughs> that I swam, yeah. Well, what a fabulous career you did have. 2000 Sydney Olympics, the 200 metre breaststroke. What was your ex Olympian experience? Oh, look, it was, it was, I think that it was the most fun that Sydney has ever been. You'd walk past people on the street, everybody wanted to say hello. Um, and I remember the first time walking into the stadium and up on the left side, all you could see at the top of feet. So I think the last three rows couldn't see the whole pool. So it was just fantastic when you were there and you look up and you couldn't see the end of the crowd. <laughs> You had some fabulous and famous teammates in that particular period. Oh yeah, and you know, a majority of them I swam with when I was at the AIS as well. So it was a really fun time to swim. It really was a fun time to be a swimmer. So, Is it as much fun in the Olympic Village as they say it is? Oh yeah. <laughs> I got to say, I used to, we, we, I swam for the first week and the second week um, there was no swimming so we were allowed to go out and I'd, I'd meet people on the way back in the village at six o'clock in the morning, have a coffee, I'd go to bed and they'd go off to whatever they were doing for the day. <laughs> the, the amount of wonderful friends you must have made from around the world. Yeah, yeah, and not only that, it, it's just, I mean, I, I love sport, I love, I love the whole community of swimming as well and I'm still in contact with a lot of them now and it, it's great to catch up and see them and still see what's still happening. I mean, things change in the swimming world and, and it's quite different to how it was when I was younger swimming, but yeah, it's, it's an amazing sport and full of amazing people. So where did this love of swimming begin? Uh, I swam in my school carnival when I was nine and I won everything except backstroke. I came second in backstroke <laughs> and that's where it started. I um, Actually a funny story is I took my daughter when she was 10 um, all through central Queensland where I grew up and she walked into her first swim meet she said mum what's my first event and I said oh, it's 50 butterfly and she said I'm going to break the record and I looked at it and it was my record <laughs> and she was nowhere near it. <laughs> Now, where did this fabulous journey begin? Middle Mount Queensland, a mining town. Whereabouts is that? Yeah, it's three hours inland from Mackay and Rockhampton, but I mean, back then it was a single road. So now it's probably about two and a half hours or two hours inland. And the swimming pool was only open for six months of the year. So I'd, I'd swim for six months and then I'd, it was netball, it was cross country, it was athletics, it was gymnastics, it was everything else after that. Yeah. And the uh, trip to the AIS? Yeah, oh, it was definitely needed. I'd so I've definitely gone through a bit of a bumpy patch with whether I wanted to swim in, in my teens and um, it came up at the perfect opportunity where it was what I needed was the discipline, keep me away, like keep me grounded on the weekends um, and to be surrounded with the right, I guess, um, with the right people that training was what was more important. And how important was Barry Prime who was a famous uh, English coach, what part did he play in your career? Oh yeah, Barry was awesome. I mean, I he actually sent me a photo just last week from an interview he did when he had hair. <laughs> and um, he, he was absolutely fantastic, Barry, as a coach. Um, I couldn't fault him. So we, we certainly had our run-ins, don't get me wrong, but um, yeah, he was fantastic. And what was a typical training session for you? Oh, well, I, I can tell you how I spent my 21st birthday at Threadbow on a training camp where we swam for two and a half hours in the morning, uh, did an hour of weights at about 11 o'clock, got back in the pool at 12 for a, a 7K set, um, got, uh, did an hour of dry land and then got back in the pool again in the afternoon. So it was the five sessions for the day <laughs> and that was my 21st birthday. <laughs> Swimming up and down, watching that line on the bottom of the pool, is as bad as what they say it is? Oh, look, I was a breaststroker. I didn't have to look at the line too much. <laughs> I was looking forward. So, but yeah, look, it, it's it, it's not as bad as what people say it is, or it's not as bad as what people think that it might be. So there's a lot going on as you're swimming up and down the pool. So, yeah. Before the Olympics, 1998, Kuala Lumpur, the Commonwealth Games. Uh, that was um, very hot. 
I think my dad flew over for that. My grandparents flew over for that. Um, yeah, that that was a lot. That was a lot of fun. That one. Yeah. And then you ventured into coaching yourself. Yeah. Um, well, that's where that's where I met Brendan as well. Um, I just I loved actually watching the little kids, the junior swimmers, when they achieve something that they didn't think they could do, and you've just been watching them train, and you've been waiting for that moment. So. I, I do miss that side of, of um, coaching, but I certainly don't miss the hours. And Brendan also had a very highly regarded career. Yeah, Brendan was a 200 breaststroker as well, which is quite funny. So he, he made uh, the junior Australian team, so not quite as high as what I did. <laughs> We're talking about Brendan Mickliffe, who's formed this wonderful association with Harness Racing as far as syndication is concerned. So how did you get involved there through Brendan? Yeah, so we worked together, we were both coaching, he did the national team and I did the junior state team um, and COVID hit and we had to do something so he mentioned to me that he was wanting to start with um, bringing horses over, it's, it's, it's in his blood, it's in his family and I thought well I always had an interest in photography so I bought myself a camera and it all started from there. And you're loving it. Oh, I absolutely love it. I, I could not go back to coaching. Um, I couldn't go back to it. I was thinking about it today and there's, there's nothing better that I'd like doing except what I'm doing right now. Yeah, I absolutely love it. And I think we've just built up such a great community of owners as well. We had the last race, oh, Tuesday the other week, we had about 30 people here, 30 owners and their family. And it's just fantastic to get people involved and to experience what we experience as well. It just the fun and the, ex the excitement of having your horse race. He now has 71 individual winners, which is outstanding. And over 120 people are now involved in harness racing through that particular syndication. So it is certainly gaining momentum. Oh, it most definitely is. And it's, it's getting bigger every day. So um, we're always looking. He's always looking at the next horse. It's always, Caroline, what do you think of this horse? <laughs> All the time. We buy two in one week and suddenly the next week he's another horse for us. <laughs> and did you have an interest in harness racing prior? Um, not for quite a few years. I think uh, my first boyfriend and I used to go to the harness racing track in Queensland, in Brisbane. Um, and I always left with more money than what I, I went there with. Um, but there was about six months of it and that, that was it. That, that's the only thing that I've, I've ever been involved in. So I get owners say to me, oh, do you know this horse or this trainer or this? And it, they're talking about horses from 20 years ago. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't have a clue. <laughs> Three children, did any of them follow in mum's footsteps? Uh, sort of, somewhat. Um, my oldest swam for quite a while, but once HSC hit, she, she needed to decide to, to do what was right for her, which was to stop swimming. So she went to nationals a few times for open water, which she loved swimming and she still loves it. Uh, my middle one is an artist and for her, she doesn't like to be puffed, unfortunately, but she's great at what she does. And my youngest one plays water polo, so he enjoys doing that one instead. Well, Carolyn, it's been great to catch up with you. As I mentioned, I've known you for two or three years now, courtesy of uh, the relationship with Brendan that I had through his dad, Paul. I might have to get an autograph after this interview, interview is finished. <laughs> I can, I can, I'll, you probably need me to sign my old name, though. <laughs> great to catch up with you. Congratulations on a fabulous career. Thank you very much. Thank you.